Hey guys, Bradley tuning in with another live video. I'm really excited to bring this one. I as promised last week, today, uh, June, July 12th, 2017, the Bank of Canada was announcing whether or not they were gonna increase interest rates. Now, to blow the surprise they have, you might have heard on the news outlets now, so the interest rates in Canada have gone up by 0.25%. So um, get yourselves ready. I, want to create it. I wanted to create this video to give you what impact does that have on the real estate market um, because I'm sure that I know people have a lot of line of credits and they've got these loans, but I think mortgages is gonna be the single biggest impact uh, and obviously it's gonna trickle down into the real estate market. So here we go. So in 2015, we actually saw two um, declines in the interest rates. Even since then, we were talking about it going up. But now, finally, it has gone up. It's been seven years since we've had an increase in interest rates. And obviously, there's a, a little fear in the market because people are, they've seen the cooling off that's happened from the foreign buyer's tax, which this, I want to start off by saying, is not that. It's different. Um, and so I think there's going to be this, this question of what's going to happen. But I want to actually pose a question to you guys, and I want to hear what you have to say. Do you guys think this is going to be a trend? Do you think the interest rates are going to continue to go up? Uh, and I'd love to see, even in the live video, if you guys want to give updates, yes or no. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you think it's going to continue? Uh, leave your comments as to why, uh, if, you're, if you're feeling brave that way. Um, but I, again, I just want to talk about what is this going to mean uh, now that we have this increase and maybe more, what influence is that going to have on the real estate market? All right. So before we get into all that, I want to give you the June numbers because they've been released by the Toronto Real Estate Board. Um, so they include sales. So sales have been down by 37%. Okay, now we know the sales numbers have been uh, lower over last year. Okay, so that's, a con that's continued. Listings are up by 15.9%. Um, and, and this is the numbers that you're going to see reported in the news outlets. But what they're not going to talk about, and I think is actually worth noting, is that in May, we actually were looking at 48.9% year over year, whereas now we're at 159 so that influx of listings that we saw, they're still here, but they've severely come down. Uh, and the price, we're looking at a 6.3% over last year. Again, uh, it's increased. There's clearly been a cooling off because we saw 30% earlier this year, but now we're down to 6%. So it's more modest. Uh, we're not looking at these crazy extreme growth. So the cooling off has really happened and, and we're seeing it all around us. Okay. But I want to tell you why I don't think this is the same as the foreign buyer's tax because clearly the foreign buyer's tax had a big influence. But to give you guys a little bit of history over the, the last six months, the, um, the Ontario government was talking about doing this foreign buyer's tax because obviously we had seen Vancouver do it. And there was a lot of uncertainty as to how many foreign buyers we actually have here in Toronto. And uh, so sure enough, the Toronto Real Estate Board stepped up. They said, listen guys, it's not a lot. There's really not. And the numbers they used was 4.9%. They said 4.9% of all of our membership are actually doing transactions with these foreign buyers. And the Ontario government said, you know what? Uh, I know you're saying it's low, but we can't take a risk. We're going to implement this tax to try and slow it all down. And that's what they did. But part of their promise was to look into it themselves. And the irony of the whole thing was they've discovered that it's 4.7% within a, a, like two tenths of a percent of what the Toronto real estate board actually predicted from the beginning. Um, so, not to say that we're going to take either side as gospel, but in my book, that's also to say that all, it's such a small portion of the market that the response we've seen because of the change far exceeds what was expected and what, was, what should have happened materially. So out of all of that, the cooling that took place was more in my book because of uncertainty. And I think uncertainty can drive the market in a lot of ways. But, and this is why I'm going to say that interest, the interest rate change is not the same because we're not looking at a level of uncertainty, we're looking at real numbers that have been processed by the Bank of Canada and projections. Um, so this isn't gonna have the same kind of freak out reaction and slow down uh, over the long term, possibly, we'll get to that in a second on what the interest rate means, but it's not the same. Um, it's happening at the same time at a different level, but it is calculated. Now, just to, as we're talking about the Toronto Real Estate Board, they are anticipating that 2017 close is looking between 13 to 18% growth from last year. So we still have growth, but clearly it's come back. Um, I, I mean, now that I'm working with my clients, I'm starting to see the things are sitting longer and it's almost having to recreate that, that re like we have to be reminded that this market we were in six months ago is not normal. 
And the market we're going to see now is starting to look more and more like it did before this crazy uh, bubble, if you will, started to, to form. And now that everything is leveled back out, now we're at a place where we're starting to see some more uh, days on market, things that are more natural, still reflective of a seller's market, but no longer a frenzy. All right. So uh, if you guys actually checked out my videos in the spring, when this was all going on in foreign buyer stocks, I made a few predictions. I was talking about uh, how this would in many ways follow Vancouver. We'd start to see uh, the decline, which we did. Um, and, and a lot of these predictions had come after because it was interesting to see the amount of reaction that took place. But once we were there, I was saying, you know what? Copying Vancouver as we did, uh, and the market kind of followed that, I said by fall 2017, this whole frenzy, which we're starting to see on the listing, starting to slow down again. By the fall, everything should be back to normal. Not at the same accelerating pace, which is good. And I mean, we can give a thumbs up to that decision. But it's definitely going to level out and no longer have this fear of uncertainty, right? So that was what I was saying in the spring. And that's what I was expecting in the fall. But uh, this just goes to show why when I'm talking to clients, I don't go any further than six months because something like this can happen, right? We were having, in the last month, we were talking on these broadcasts about whether they would go up this year or not. And here we go. A week ago, it was 90% sure that interest rates were going to go up. And this is what we've seen. So because of that, I think this is a point where I'm going to make a re, I'm going to reevaluate here. I'm going to reset that prediction for the next six months. And I actually think this interest rate is going to continue to keep that market cool. It's actually going to, it's going to slow things down a little bit. There's obviously going to be a blip uh, because people are trying to get in and lock in those fixed mortgages because the rates are going up uh, and that naturally happens. But I think it's actually going to prolong. And I think we're going to be seeing that rising that was originally in the fall was more likely to happen in the spring. It's just going to delay things a little bit. But I want to talk about this interest rate. Okay. So the, we have to realize that the amounts that we're at at the moment are recession rates. This was done in 2015 because oil prices were tanking and they wanted to make sure that we were able to give that boost to the economy. Now things are back on track. We've got inflation slightly lower, but unemployment is where it needs to be. Everything seems to be coming together perfectly. And so the Bank of Canada is saying, you know what, let's start to come back to what is more normal. We're still historically low, even with this change. Um, but it was definitely necessary. Uh, so the days of cheap money, the days of getting really quick, uh, affordable mortgages, uh, and people have kind of gotten caught up in that. I think those days are over personally. I think we're going to start to see some more, uh, practical numbers come to pass here. So there's two people that are on this equation on mortgages. We've got people in these fixed mortgages, right? You guys aren't going to see it until you you come up for renewal. Uh, the, the con actually, the irony is, is people who are there today talking to their banks, you're like, you know what? I gotta go to the bank because the interest rates are going to go up. Um, even if you went today, it's too late. The banks actually had, had seen this coming because we've been talking about this for a little while. Bank of Canada made these hints. So the rates for fixed mortgages have been up for a little while now. Uh, who's actually impacted today is those variable mortgages. Because if I was listening to some numbers, uh, Patricia Lovett Reed uh, from CP24 was talking about how uh, if you take a $530,000 mortgage, um, if you were in a variable mortgage from yesterday to today, that amount per year has gone up $708 a year. So that's the real numbers. Those are the numbers that you're starting to see in that change. So there is a material difference, uh, but it is still modest, right? So if you can't take that kind of pressure as a, vari a client in a variable mortgage, my suggestion would be to lock in. Uh, whether or not you think it's going to go up or not, we are at historically low and I'm not a mortgage broker. Uh, I'm, I'm not, it's not my forte. I would say speak to someone who, who can advise you on that specifically. Um, but if you have that level of discomfort, I know dealing a lot with young clients, um, they're, they're trying to make the most of their money and variable tends to do that in the long term. But if you can't take the uncertainty, I think now's a good time. And we're starting to see huge trends. Fixed mortgages are almost at the same level as variable. Uh, and there seems to be this exodus moving over. Uh, so I would just, I would pay attention to that if you're in that variable and the change is done today, but the, again, bringing it back to the question that I have for you guys, do you think this is a trend? Do you think it's going to keep to go? Do you think it's going to keep going up? Um, and I think that, uh, whatever the answers are that we're going to see yes or no, which I'm going to leave with you guys, uh, take a look at them, see what people are thinking, you know, because this is, no one has a crystal ball. We're going based on our own information and this collective, uh, knowledge is, is, um, I think going to be more powerful than, than even myself, just uh, giving you guys an update. Okay. So to give, to, to kind of wrap all this up here, this change in itself, isn't going to have any major 
influence. It's very incremental in nature. It's not meant to shift and change the market, I think, in the same way the foreign buyer tax was. It's more of to show you and give, it's almost to show your hand. Show the Bank of Canada, this is what we're planning to do. We're starting to follow the United States, which have increased a few times now. Uh, so they're starting to give that, that tip, right? I think where the challenge will come in, where we're gonna see a problem is in if, if, if we end up reaching two to 3% growth. So because this can happen quarterly, uh, if, in two to, if we reach two to 3% increase, now the question becomes, can consumers maintain that? Because the amount of debt in Canada is very high. Uh, so we're gonna keep our finger on this. We're gonna continue to watch as it revolves every quarter. The next update is in October. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, but again, asking you guys, do you think this is a trend? Do you think it's something that's gonna keep going on? Or is this something that's a one time? To give, to give the other side, because obviously we're seeing that there's this growth, I wanna also give you guys some tips on where to look on why maybe it won't. Uh, so there's a 40% chance they're saying now that in October the interest rate will go up again uh, by this 0.25 again. Um, but, uh, but the reasons I think that it might be delayed or a little slower is, uh, I guess, um, the main reason is the Canadian dollar. Um, because Canadian, the Canadian dollar actually has been doing very well, especially today with this announcement. They've just gone, it's gone really high. Uh, so that, that hurts Canadian exports, right? So the Canadian, all of this is based on the Canadian economy. If we start to hurt on the Canadian in the Canadian exporting, um, then, uh, then it'll slow things down, right? So maybe we won't be accelerating at the speed the Bank of Canada is predicting. And the other side is inflation. They're going based on inflation predictions. So just a couple of hints if you wanna do some more research on your time. Those are the two major things I think that can, can prevent it from happening. Uh, but I'm interested to hear, again, your thoughts. How quick do you think this is gonna happen? All right, guys, a lot of information. Really excited, it's a, a big day in this industry. Don't get worked up about it, um, but just become knowledgeable. Start to figure out what's going on, depending on what your decision is. If you're looking to buy, if you're in a variable mortgage, or maybe your renewal on a fixed mortgage is coming up. Hopefully this gives you some, uh, some ideas, some tips on how to go about uh, figuring that out. As for right now, uh, just leaving you guys, make sure you know your numbers. That's all we can do right now. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Beautiful weather out there. At least it is right now where I am. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying your day. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll check in with you next week. Take care.